may, might I say SharePoint is the most used data source for power apps? Kurt, do you have any statistics on that for me? 70, 70% of polled 70%. users use SharePoint. That's a lot. So maybe not feel bad if it's like, oh, okay, well, I've been using SharePoint. I thought maybe I was in the minority. No, you're in the majority. <laughs> Which oftentimes <laughs> means that you're in the, the, the side that causes some trouble, right? So you're in trouble. Yeah. If most people are doing something, maybe it's something you don't want to do. <laughs> Now, guys, if you're looking at SharePoint, you're 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 doing well from the standpoint of you're not using Excel. <laughs> Leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds. Let's open up the pros here and uh, let, let's see what we got. Most used data source. So you just told us 70 percent. That's interesting. You know that. And I think the reason why it's most used. No premium licensing required. Yeah. So. You know, you, maybe you think about Dataverse, maybe you think about SQL Server, maybe you're thinking about MySQL. Some people don't even know you could use MySQL, which is an open source system, yeah. uh, relational database management system, and also yeah. Postgres. But those, they, they all require premium licensing. What are we about to say, Kurt? Well, oftentimes when we get potential clients or people coming up wanting some tutoring or some, they got questions about data sources, the first question we ask is, do you have premium licensing available? Oftentimes they say no. Well, then that just kind of locks you in. You got two choices. Excel, SharePoint, right? So, yeah. so, but but then if you have if you have premium license available, there's a lot of reasons why you may not want to do that. It is ubiquitous. That means it's present, appearing, or found everywhere. I mean, if you're a Microsoft shop, you know, you're if you're a, a company, a corporation um, that uses Microsoft 365, Office 365, whatever you want to call it, um, chances are you got SharePoint. They're using SharePoint yeah. as a intranet. And yep. um, it's easy to go get permission from IT. Hey, can I get a, a SharePoint site out here? You know, and uh, it and it's it's much easier than getting uh, something like that created, getting access, something you know created. Sometimes it's a little hard. It's like, uh, why do you need a new site created? Now, I would uh, suggest to people, hey, you should really create a SharePoint site per. Power Apps application that you do, okay? Now, if you're creating three apps and they all have to do the same data, okay, we'll just use one SharePoint site. Sometimes you'll get a little kickback from IT. It's like, well, your department already has a SharePoint site. And it's like, okay. Well, you know, if you're not going to... Mm -hmm. What's IT in the business of, Darren? Saying no, not allowed, <laughs> access denied. <laughs> exactly nya, right. Nya, nya, nya. <laughs> nya, 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 nya. That's IT. Don't you love hearing that? What, yeah. What's that sound whenever you get access denied? Um, Nina, Nina. No passing go. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun here, Kurt, don't we? <laughs> yeah. It is true, though. There's so much truth to that. And IT has got a general feeling it's safe for you to have that. Now, if they give you a, a, a SQL Server database, like, I don't know what they're going to do with that. That thing could grow up to, to 10 terabytes tonight. You know, you, they just don't know. And why they freak out so much is, you know, you mess it up, you do something wrong, and uh, you can fill up a hard drive. And now things are down because it was on another hard drive with a, with a critical application, and it's all on IT shoulders. And then people all are like, IT, get your act together. And that's what I like to say no so much. I've managed networks. I've I've worked in that that area before. And you are responsible for having that network up and and making it a, a, a fine, well-tuned machine. So and, I understand both sides. I, I really don't like being told no all the time though. No, and I <laughs> IT's got a main goal, and that is don't let your uniform get dirty. So if you got if if they go in there and <laughs> you know all of a sudden their uniform gets dirty, they gotta come in on weekend, they got problems. They're saying no, 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 you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it's much better than excel I'll tell you that right there yeah, way better if you're looking at between those two things definitely go with sharepoint much 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 better yeah. um you can actually edit the sharepoint edit screen with power apps did you know that kurt no yeah, that's yeah. something new we're gonna have to that's a whole nother thing i somebody was hitting it when i was first learning power apps i'm like no i can write an app in power apps I'm like no you know you create an app within sharepoint I'm like, well, you can embed Power Apps in it. No, look at this, Kurt. Integrate Power Apps, customize forms. Oh, boy. 
oh, look, there's Power Automate. What can we do with Power Automate? Well, let's say if something changes, I want to create a flow and I want to be emailed every time something. Now, now there's other things in here like alert. Yeah, you can alert me and that type of stuff. But you could do some complex stuff with Power Automate. Okay. Power BI. Well, let's visualize the list. Okay. Power Platform is well integrated within SharePoint. So that's a plus. But, Kurt, I, I, I just sort of want to knock your socks off here, man. Okay, are you ready for this? All right, so while that's coming up, Kurt, we're going to keep the ball rolling here, okay? So you're going to get, you're gonna, your, your socks are going to get blown off there. Very little learning curve. It's not very difficult to know how to create a list within Power Apps. I'm, I'm sorry, within SharePoint. Doing it in Dataverse, there's a little bit more of a learning curve. And then SQL Server, there's a lot, lot more of a learning curve. Uh, you can create indexes on views. So if you're going to be doing lots of searching on a particular column, create an index. Now, I won't go into that now. We could have a whole 10 or 20 minute video on just how to do that. And let's say you're going to be searching on an email field or something. Go ahead and create an index on one of those views. And we're talking about views. You can create multiple views. You can sort things a certain way. You can have them group by. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Again, we could have a whole video on that. These views aren't quite as nice as a Dataverse or SQL Server view. It's been around for 20 years. I remember back in 2003 installing, uh, it was back then there was an acronym, WSS. Uh, and I've forgotten what that even uh, means. But those are all the pros. What about the cons? Would that be a Windows SharePoint site, WSS? Um. Don't make me Google it. I don't no, think so. I'll do it. It's not worth it. Yeah. And what I was going to say, it's been around for 20 years. <laughs> That's actually also a con. I'm going to put that here. Uh, I thought I had that there. Maybe I didn't. Okay. You did at the bottom, I think. Yeah. So those are the cons. Before I go on to the cons, look at this. I'm in Power Apps, modifying the form here. Okay. And what, I mean, this is a form. Well, you, you know, you can drop buttons on here, Kurt. Have your own buttons. Boom. And guess what you can do? On Slack, you can write your own code. You know what I really like to do? The first thing I do, if I'm going to modify a screen a lot, I will duplicate it. Always do that, right? Just in case you want to go back to it. I'm going to go to here, screen one, and I'm going to go scorched earth on this and just delete it. I'm going to delete this button. And look at that. What does that do for us, Kurt? Well, that allows me to let me put a little label on here. And what I'll say is go to the Power Apps application to edit this data, please. Okay. That's how I use this. That's how I like it. I don't want people going to the SharePoint list modifying this stuff. I'm going to make this uh, blue. Pure blue, if I can get a pure blue here. So R0, G0, and B is 255. That gives us a pure blue. And I'm going to make this um, larger here. And I'm going to underline it. Now, that looks like a link, right? So I'm going to save this. And sometimes it takes a while for, the, for this to, like, propagate back over to SharePoint. And what you want to do is on the... On select property, you could you could uh, do a um, a launch, okay, on your Power Apps, and inside these double quotes you put the link to the app, okay. So now if I say go back to SharePoint, I'm going to save and publish it. It should take me right back to SharePoint. Sort of a weird thing how it switches between SharePoint and, and uh, Power Apps here. So now. It takes probably a good 20 to 30 seconds for it to update, okay? But if I were to click on this, see, it's got the old edit form there, right? But if I just keep doing this, I'll hit refresh on the on the browser here. And I'll click on this link. Oh, look at this, fetching your app, starting your app, connecting. Oh, look at that. They can't edit it now, can they? What if instead of hitting this, I say new? Oh, go to the Power Apps. Oh, I guess I should probably do that. Does that blow your mind at all, Kurt? It does. That's pretty smooth. Especially for people who use Power Apps a lot. So you've got, they can view it. You could even probably lock down the view a little more. So um, we've got edit the current view. We can sort things. I'd like to turn off 
in uh, the, the grid editing, okay? But here's, you can check off all the columns. I mean, it creates a lot of columns for you. You may not even know that it was there. Yeah, it, it keeps the innocent out of it, right? So, and then if you try to circumvent that and get in there anyway, well, then you're going to have to, you're going to be responsible for some stuff, right? You're going to have to answer to somebody probably in the, within the organization. So that's a good way of doing it, I think. I mean, you do group buys, totals, styles, and what I'm looking for, I'm not trying to give you a, a, a lowdown on how to do this, but there is an edit in grid. If you can um, turn that off, that is the one security hole I see by doing this. If I hit cancel, I'm trying to get back to the list now. Um, at versions, there we go. There's edit and grid view. Okay, this is a way they can uh, circumnavigate or get around our little form there. They can go in here and modify this. Well, if you can turn that off, I've heard you can do that within the view settings, or you can create a new view that's very basic that doesn't maybe display anything, because um, I think they can only modify what they have in here. So maybe that's something else that you can do. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, that's... I, I like to lock down my SharePoint list as much as I can by doing that. But moving on to the cons, users can wander in your data and modify it directly. So that's what we're trying to, to uh, keep them from doing there a few minutes ago. It can be secured, but it's what maybe you or me, we'd call that soft security. So what I like to do when I build apps is I like to create a, a, a separate site and all the lists in there. And I don't tell the users, oh, hey, you've got access to the site. They need access to the site. They need to be able to add and edit records. And if, and if because with, with a Power App, it passes through the credentials of the user to SharePoint. So they have to have access to do those. Now it's different with uh, SQL Server and, and uh, Dataverse. Well, you know, that's a different video, a different day. But um, it's going to pass in their credentials. So if they don't have access to read, edit, right, then they're not going to, your app won't be really of any use to them, right? right? Right. So they might be able to find it back there. So I'd call it uh, soft security. Uh, may handle things that other relational database management systems like SQL Server do well. Okay. Can you give me an example of, of things like that, Kurt? Uh, well, you just got it right there, record locking, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Any type of right, um, granular control, the security, you can lock down the rows. You want to handle this, this uh, next bullet point here for us? Uh, the create parallel environments. Yeah. So, so it's really hard because it doesn't just automatically, there's no way to absolute, absolutely re replicate the tables that you have created in one environment over to another environment. It's just, it, there's just no way to do it. You almost have to have screenshots of the structures and, and put them in manually, you know, that's, and then of course you have data. Now, once you've got the structures created, it's not too bad. Oftentimes now, when you, have you, to, go when you say structures, what are other words for that, which you're, you're trying uh, to get at? When so you mean in, 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 well, again, that's an RDBMS term, right? So, so in a list term, the, the columns, so that there is no way to replicate the columns without just going in by hand and creating those, you know, within a new environment. If I go into list settings, this is what I would call the schema or what Kurt would call the structure, right? Yeah. So these are the fields. We've got title, application name, app version, so on and so forth. Okay. And, and you've got the data type. Is it a single line of text? Is it a number? You know, what exactly is there? So we call that schema or the structure. Um, back in the day, Kurt, you taught me DDL. You, you taught me DDL, dynamic data language, which allows you to create tables, modify columns with SQL code. All that allows you to modify the schema, right? So um, that's what we're uh, we're talking about here. So we might want to have. So you want to do all your development in one spot. And you want your data be. You know, your test data, maybe have a lot more data than just dev. And then your production, you don't want anybody putting test records in production, right? But SharePoint's your data source. Well, you sort of do need three, at least two, at least something separate for production, right? Right. But uh, it's not very easy to do that. Sometimes people rely on other tools 
you know, and, and which with is deploying. Sort of- deploying's not smooth either for the same reasons. Because if you're going, if you're deploying, you're going to a different environment. Perhaps you're writing this program and you're wanting to sell it or rent it. You know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to go through all kinds of um, havoc trying to get those data structures across those schemas, those lists. Yeah. And then, uh, what about import? You've ever imported a spreadsheet or some data into a SharePoint list, yeah. and notice that like title, first name, last name, you try to reference it in Power Apps, you can't find it anywhere. Or I know. Like that. And then you got to go. Then you, you you can you'll run across it somewhere, and it'll be some weird looking field. It's like what is? I didn't call it that. You know, there's an underlying variable out there that you just don't have access to that it just automatically puts it towards. You know. Now you see here at the bottom. Now, if, if you create a SharePoint list as a data source, never, 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 never rename your columns and if you do it's just a headache okay that means don't that means don't do just that. don't just don't do it yeah right beside your face here kurt i see that application name application name now if that came across as field one let's say we imported it as and it came in as field one i'm like no that's application name and you called it you go into power apps because what it's going to do it's going to say field one <laughs> okay and i'll show you what i'm talking about here just really quick i'm going to do it really quick kurt Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say misspelled. And I'm going to put a space in there, putting spaces in list names and column names. I don't recommend. Guess what? In Power Apps, you got to put little single quotes around things like that. And it's a little bit of a pain. Don't put yeah. spaces in table yeah. names, list names, column names. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it as text. I'm going to hit OK. Okay, what do we have here? Misspelled columns. Do you see what we did here at the bottom? Oh, well, that's not that's not really a problem, right? Oh, look at what it did when we had a space in there. Misspelled space columns. It put an underscore. It put an X. It put a zero, another zero, a two, another zero, and an underscore. Just for a little old, little innocent space in there. Now, what is that number, Darren? X0020. What's that number? That is the ASCII code. Well, what's the nut? What's the value though? Space hit thirty-two. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's that's why we got Kurt in here, guys. He knows things I don't, and I know everything else that he doesn't. That's why we make it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to digress for ten seconds. So you know, there you can buy a book on Amazon, and it's called "Everything They Don't Teach You in Harvard Business School." Then there's another book. It says everything they do teach you in Harvard Business School. And if you own both of those books and read them, you'll have all knowledge in the universe. Wow. That's impressive. Of course, I keyed. I go in here and I say, nope, this is going to be simple, a simple field. I'm going to hit OK. Of course, my, my head is covering up the OK button, just FYI. Oh, look, now it's simple. It, OK, it's, it's simple. simple. Oh, it's look at what it did. We are stuck with that field name, misspelled space columns. So, guys, it's not the it's not the easiest thing to work with, but you know it's better than Excel, right? So, importing is not smooth. Renaming columns, don't even try. We just saw what happens. Yeah. So I have here been around for twenty years. Well, I've got it at the bottom, so I'll take that out. It's been around for twenty years and was not designed for Power Apps. Don't be using complex types. Look up fields. Now, lookups are good for in Dataverse, okay? SQL Server doesn't have lookup columns. Um, don't use lookups. Don't use people pickers. Uh, and I, I would suggest doing other things. And, you know, if you use, you know, those lookup columns, there's so many other better ways to handle that type of stuff. And if you just go oh, along with these complex types, a lot of times you'll have delegation problems. Um you're tempted to use, type, use types that Power Apps that makes Power Apps development difficult. Hey, if you're getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel. And that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. Okay. And you can only have, if you try to pull in, you, let's say you've got uh, more than 10 lookup columns. Can you imagine having more than 10 lookup columns inside of a SharePoint list? Anything out of that Power Apps like, nope, it's got more lookup columns here than I can handle.
I've actually seen that happen with somebody that they were trying to do all that. They brought it to me. I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> well, thank goodness power apps did that because if you got more than 10 lookup columns at a table, that's you got something going on there. Maybe. <laughs> um, I think though that could you just talk about a complex data type? What is that? Sure. Yeah. So let's create a, uh, a new column here in my list and I can call it whatever. Okay. Single line of text. That's a good, in fact, I'm going to zoom up in here. Okay. So that's, that's going to be good. That's a simple data. I'm type. Get our faces out of the way. Okay. Multiple line of text. That's good. I recommend staying away from rich text. It will try to put a bunch of HTML stuff in there. So if I pick multiple lines of text, you'll find down here below, you want to select plain text, not this rich text. Okay. A choice. That's a complex type. I recommend staying away from those. There's a different way of doing that. Either create a separate table for that, or just if it never changes, then you just like, Define so, that collection inside your app. Right. And this is kind of what I wanted to talk about real quick. So, so when you're looking at a choice or a complex data type, you're dealing with something that's more than just one, one, one type of a value. So, so let's look at choice. It could be like the status of something. It could be inactive. It could be new. It could be um, stalled, whatever it is that you want to create stat that. But so now you're going to have to deal with that, those three choices everywhere within your power app. And and so you got a the choice you got the choice data type, which is like a simple data type like text. But then you've got new stuff that's underneath that that is the list of items that are in that those choices. And then you have to compare those each one of those every time to say does this choice equal this? You know, so it, there's a lot of work you have to do with the, with those complex data types. Um, I just want to recommend that to stay away from complex data types wherever possible and let your apps do the work. But uh, the way the way you have to handle these these complex data types is not very nice in in uh, SharePoint. Yeah. So look, okay. So uh, number that's a good simple type. Currency. I I wouldn't I wouldn't mess around with currency. Um, I, I've never tried, but why not just put it into a number? It can handle decimals. Yeah. You know. And in fact, uh, that's that's probably the best one decimal as far as being being real a real number. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind, every time you create a SharePoint list, it's going to create an ID field in there for you. It's going to be the primary key and it's going to be an auto number, how, how it, an auto number works in access. Or if you're familiar with SQL Server, it's called identity. So it typically starts off with one. Your second row will be two. And if you delete one, it doesn't, nothing else takes that number, but it's an auto number. Uh, date and time, that's good. Look up. I'd, I'd stay away from look up. That's complex type. And then it, like things change and I got to say, okay, well, this thing looks up in, in some other table, but you don't want to do that. Now, I've got a lot of videos. If you guys have any questions on how to do foreign keys within your list, it's definitely uh, do a search on Darren East on YouTube and maybe we'll create a dedicated video where we go in more in depth on that. Uh, but don't do lookups. Yes, no, Booleans, they work really well. Now, what happens if you want to know if they didn't answer? So if they didn't check off a checkbox, were they saying no, or did they just bypass the answer, not answer? Well, you don't know. A Boolean only gives you two values. So it still works just, just fine. The yes, no, a lot better than dataverse. Yes, no. Person or group, that's a, that's a complex type, a hyperlink or a picture. I had a hyperlink and picture be together. Um, I, w I wouldn't mess with that. I would put a hyperlink into a uh, single or multiple lines of text. I put pictures actually in multiple lines of text and I work with it as a base 64. Um, I don't mess with the images, the calculate. I, I have done calculated stuff before. Uh, that's no big deal. Uh, task outcome never worked with external data. I've never looked at that. I use almost exclusively just simple types. Okay, guys. Yep. Well, that that will conclude our look at SharePoint. Guys, for some reason, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video next. Let's see if they're right. Or you can select this playlist, which I've selected for you based on the content you're currently watching. Guys, got to hurry. Click one of them. Otherwise, YouTube's going to autoplay some other video, which you probably don't want.
Thanks.